The first time I played Half-Life 2 and I heard Dr. Mossman's voice on the speaker of the airlock, I thought it was a young boy. It turns out it was quite the opposite and she just has a sort of throaty voice. Now I'm not saying that Judith Mossman is old, mind you. I mean, I'm 32 years old, and she must be 38 to 42 or so. Now while that may seem exceedingly old to many of you, I assure you it is not. <laughs> The first thing I notice about Dr. Mossman is that she's extremely enthusiastic about meeting Gordon, to the point where it's fairly obvious that she's feigning her respect for Gordon both as a colleague and a person, and that in fact she's probably very envious of him. As we soon find out from both Eli and Alex, it would seem she has reason to be so. And the second thing I notice about her is that she's not bad looking at all. <laughs> now I know she certainly has her share of faults, but she's also a fine scientist, according to Eli, and I think throughout the game, despite acting a little silly on occasion, she never fails to do precisely what she feels is the right thing, and that's a fine quality in a person, even if it does sometimes lead them astray. I like Dr. Mossman uh, very much for the fact that she's not pure evil, like Dr. Breen, and not a complete angel, like Alex, but in fact she's just like the rest of us, a person somewhere in between, who makes mistakes, but all in all does the very best. In the way I reckon it, I've got a shot with a woman like that. <laughs> And more, uh, more than anyone else in the game so far as well, Dr. Mossman at least takes the time to get us up to speed on the remarkable progress that has been made by Eli and Dr. Kleiner in the field of portal technology. The lift ride down to the lab is quite entertaining as well, as we get to see the Vortigaunt and the human playing chess, on a rather oversized chessboard, and the two Vortigaunt chefs preparing head crabs. Yum. It took me a few plays through the game to notice these things, because I was usually spending most of my time looking at Dr. Mossman's sweater. Eli Vance is an excellent contrast to Dr. Kleiner, and this leads me to believe that this is why they're such a good team. Eli is laid back and personable in every way that Dr. Kleiner is uptight and introverted. He seems to be in good spirits and retaining a sense of humor despite the circumstances, losing his leg, the world coming to an end, and living in the basement of an old hydroelectric plant. Nevertheless, beneath his easygoing exterior, I do get a certain sense of strength and even grimness about his character. Like Dr. Kleiner's lab, the portal room at Black Mesa East is full of little things to look at, which further broaden our view as to the general state of the world. Like Dr. Kleiner, Eli has an old cork message board, and now tacked on it are several articles about the Combine invasion and the events at Black Mesa, and despite zooming in as far as you can, you cannot read anything more than the headlines, which is really a shame because there's so much more I'd like to know, though I suppose there's something to be gained from maintaining the mystery. There's this green thing that Eli says Alex brought home. Now, this thing really fascinates me, and to me it looks like some sort of gas mask or helmet, though for what type of creature I would not even venture a guess. And of course there's the partially broken picture of Eli, Alex, and Alex's mother, Arzion. This picture certainly shows us where Alex got her looks, and it's a bit of an emotional pinprick, as, it, uh, as Eli at least insinuates that she may be dead, though again we're left to wonder to ourselves about the details of what may have happened. Eli shows us this small chamber with a crystalline-like material inside that looks suspiciously like the same rock that we rolled into the test chamber in the original Half-Life, thereby causing this whole bloody mess in the first place. Now, Eli tells us to come over and look at it, but then disappointingly tells us nothing about it. Thanks, Eli. <laughs> Though I'm sure it's, uh, it looks like a bit of rock from the planet Zen. It's plain to see that uh, Alex and Eli share a close relationship, probably made even stronger by not only the shared grief over the disappearance or death of Alex's mother, but also, you know, the unending hardship and trauma that would afflict anyone who falls victim to an alien colonization of their planet. In real life, I'm not a very big fan of childish, interpersonal conflict or dramatics, and this carries over into my video game playing as well. I'm a sort of person that wants the people around me to just get on well with each other and put pettiness aside, and because of this, I have to admit that Alex and Dr. Mossman's little spat about the portal repairs makes me more than a little bit nervous. Uh, it's the first time that we see that both of these women can be a little bit catty, and I do not care at all for cattiness, especially between two women that I like. <laughs> Sometimes I think you deliberately misunderstand me. <clears throat> Alex! Why don't you take Gordon along and give him some practice with the gravity gun? Sure. Come on, Gordon. Let's go have some fun. The zero-point energy field manipulator is not a toy, Alex. Ugh. Yeah. Let's get out of here. Alex, at least, more or less apologizes for her conflict with Dr. Mossman. 
And despite making me uncomfortable, or perhaps even because of it, I do like this scene very much for it makes these people seem uh, much more human, and therefore that much more endearing. And I do wish Alex had told Dr. Mossman to uh, save the drama for her mama. The gravity gun. Now what, <laughs> what can I possibly say about this device that you don't already know? You can't swing a dead cat over your head by the tail without hitting someone who knows what the gravity gun is. I know I've made a similar comparison before, but this never ceases to amaze me. If you do a Yahoo internet search for gravity gun, you come up with nearly 4.8 million hits. However, if you do the same search for Nobel Peace Prize winning physician Albert Schweitzer, you fall short with just under 4 million hits. <laughs> well, at least we know where people's priorities lie. The gravity gun, in my humble opinion, is without a doubt the centerpiece of Half-Life 2. Now, while we've already had some measure of manipulation over the environment, picking up objects or shoving them around with our, you know, quote-unquote hands, with the arrival of the gravity gun, we can, for the first time, really exert control over that same environment. Now, by your standards, I'm quite sure that I'm a video game amateur, so I don't know if a similar device has ever appeared in a video game before Half-Life 2. Of course, the science fiction idea of a tractor beam long precedes Half-Life 2, but I do feel quite certain that the gravity gun was probably an almost completely unique and groundbreaking innovation for a game with very little precedent, if any at all. After Alex teaches us the basic uses of the gravity gun, she introduces us to a giant robotic companion, Dog. Dog is a great character, and in a sense, he, like Barney, provides the game with short bits of comic relief. Even when Dog is in combat, he usually behaves in a humorous manner, throwing large objects about, smashing things, whooping and whining and carrying on like a canine, yet at the same time he possesses all of the intelligence, or even more, of a human. I think it's this blend of canine and human that makes Dog such a lovable character in the game. Of course, Dog certainly helps us out a number of times, certainly here when he engages us in a game of fetch with an old combine roller mine in order to help uh, sharpen our skills with the gravity gun. Now Gordon really just has rotten luck altogether. Just when things had become stable and pleasant, Black Mesa East is attacked by the Combine, cutting short our fun and sending us on the run once more. The first time I played, I was really quite disappointed that I could not spend a much larger amount of time exploring Black Mesa East at my leisure, but uh, I can understand that the average player would quickly become bored with this and would prefer more action. As we left Dr. Kleiner's lab, Barney told us that he wished he could come with us to Black Mesa East, and uh, I was really hoping that we would get to linger around long enough for him, and perhaps four of his very similar looking friends, uh, to arrive and join us for a game of football in the scrapyard. And of course, this is English rules football in which a stun stick is allowed. Wow, I could just watch them all day at that. It's really quite mesmerizing. I wish there was a way to make that into a screensaver. <laughs> 